Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and it's been just over a week since a video we made blew up talking about the Save the Kids scam. Since then, me and CoffeeZilla have been sitting together at least two nights ago, uh, where we sat down for seven hours going through transaction to transaction. Now, when I made that video, we basically covered the entirety, uh, at least at the time, of Save the Kids, a charity token all about saving the kids that was pumped and dumped to no end. Now, since then, a lot has actually happened, and this video is going to be long, and it's going to be full of a lot of things, but I want to cover every base as much as I can. This won't actually even be the last video. We are actually looking into a further audit and we're getting full interviews with people who are just now starting to come out in troves to me and CoffeeZilla and everyone else who's looking into this. So it's a big story, but this is going to be a long video. Sit down, relax, grab a beer because we're going to dive in even further into Save the Kids. Part dose. Now, since then, FaZe Clan itself ended up putting out a statement where they said, we have made the decision to remove K from FaZe Clan and have suspended Jarvis, Nikon, and Tico until further notice. So one expulsion and, a, and the rest of them suspensions. FaZe Clan has absolutely no involvement with our members' activity in the cryptocurrency space. We strongly condemn their recent behavior. The trust and respect of our fans has been and will always be our number one priority. Now, this announcement is the one thing that threw the oil into the fire, so to speak. You know what I mean? It really blew things up beyond a point that nobody could not cover it. You had new sites covering it, Twitch streamers, YouTubers, everyone in the space was looking at Face Clan with eyes open. And honestly, it's not like they could have dug their head into the sand and pretended nothing fucking happened. Because the evidence that we looked at the last time was already pretty damning. Coffee's second video was already damning when he dug up the actual addresses based on the giveaways trace them back to the original account holders which are believed to belong to these members in question some of them at least so again to reiterate if you go to the winner's wallet which you can look up on bsc scan you will find safe galaxy tokens now again you have to see around the time of the giveaway in this case it's two days after look at the address that sent that safe galaxy coin now you can go to that address which is ox 5 af 8 d 67 b 22 and you can see in their entire transaction list or token transfers they not only have saved the kids from the uh from the actual deployer address ox401 but you can even go further beyond and actually find the uh safe galaxy token so they own safe galaxy in fact clicking that right there you can see the safe galaxy where they earned, uh, got from the deployer and they started sending around to numerous addresses and you can see it more strongly in this giveaway too where you can see that the safe galaxy deployer around the 5th of may and then you can see just a day after you can start seeing multiple accounts being sent a safe galaxy token now to understand, a statement like this has to be made because what effectively happened was actually pretty illegal. I know a lot of people have told everyone and there's this weird belief that people think that promoting cryptocurrency isn't really illegal. It's not regulated by the SEC. And to an extent, there are regulation issues regarding cryptocurrencies right now because they're super new. But at the end of the day, what we saw here was very, very, very illegal, okay? Because effectively what happened with Save the Kids token or really any other token that gets pumped and dumped is effectively what happened to John McAfee. If you don't know, John McAfee is a late computer cybersecurity CEO who's actually found dead in a Spanish prison cell uh, with suicide as the cause of death. All right, it's yeah, I'm just going to go with what officially is out there. Now, at this point, he was basically granted an extradition order to the United States. Okay, basically he was going to be sent back for a litany of crimes that he was being charged with. Now, some of those crimes, all right, included unpaid tax disputes. I believe that's actually one of the reasons he was actually being extradited extradited, but in a lot of ways, he had a bunch of other complaints. Now, this one came straight from the DOJ. So in this entire document, this indictment over here, the summary of the fraudulent schemes, okay? So 19A, the scalping schemes. So let's read this real quick. The first scheme involved a fraudulent practice called scalping, which is sometimes referred to as a pump and dump scheme. In this scalping scheme, McAfee and other McAfee team members, including CC1, brought large quantities of publicly traded cryptocurrency altcoins, which qualified as commodities or securities at inexpensive market prices. Published false and misleading tweets via the official McAfee Twitter account recommending those altcoins for investments to members of the investing public in order to artificially inflate or pump up 
their market prices and then sold or dumped their investment positions in those altcoins into the short-term market interest stimulated by McAfee's deceptive tweets. Through the scalping scheme, McAfee and other McAfee team members, including CC1, collectively earned more than $2 million in illicit profits while the long-term value of the recommended altcoins purchased by the investors declined substantially as of a year after the promotional tweets. Now, reading that complaint, it's honestly very hard for me not to find the similarities. Like, if you were to take all instances of McAfee team and McAfee in that statement and replace it with Save the Kids token and the various people that have associated themselves with this token, it's very hard to not find or look at this situation and find a lot of similarities, okay? Again, I am not a lawyer, and if there's anybody better to legally explain this, absolutely feel free. But it looks like the similarities are quite glaring. Now, ever since then, me, CoffeeZilla, Barely Sociable, Nerd City have been investigating and our own for all of the aspects regarding Save the Kids token. And while we've all had our own month-long observations into this charity token, literally looking at it from life to this point, uh, in less than a week, in less than a day after I uploaded my initial video, the Reddit community, Save the Kids BSC, suddenly went private. The actual website has all but gone, even even from Google search results last time I checked. But luckily, I do coincidentally have video of it. And while it's interesting, the website disappearing, even some of the video material, hell, before it went down, a lot of the influencers magically disappeared. A lot of their endorsements, their tweets, even the initial landing page video that you could watch has all but gone. One aspect that I didn't cover and I really fucking wish I did was when Save the Kids, chair, when Save the Kids Tokens website came out, I actually Googled Save the Kids, and I also came across another legitimate charity, Save the Children, an international NGO that's actually based out of the United Kingdom. One thing I want you to look at between these two websites is look at the layouts of the page. This could literally be chalked up to, again, them using a similar web layout anyways, but look at the similarities in the logos, the color scheme. Look, I'm not a trademark copyright expert or a lawyer, okay? I feel like I've done enough YouTube to know my way around copyright, but I have to imagine the actual charity, the international NGO, wouldn't feel too happy knowing that they could potentially be mistaken at first glance with this controversial charity token, okay? It almost felt like when this website was created, there was some level of intentions to sort of piggyback off of an actual website. I have talked to people literally investigating this that have confused either website between each other. So again, I have to say for the record, I have to say in my opinion, it feels really shady that that had to be a thing. Now, even looking further into the website again, let's go over a couple points, okay? A charity token, which of its own admission has a 3% transaction tax which is then divided into 1% lock liquidity, 1% back to the holders, and then 1% back to charity. You know, doing the goddamn math in the situation should probably tell you that this coin that was supposed to be the saintly endeavor wasn't exactly designed to be as charitable as it really could be. The website's gone, and the last time we looked into it, the value on the token itself has pretty much plummeted to just over 90% from where it initially was. It hasn't recovered. Save the kids is gone, okay? Those kids are all but missing, okay? They're over. Now, in the last video I sat down and broke a scheme where some of the top wallet addresses were holding the Save the Kids token. They received it from deployer addresses. They had it ready to go. The day of the 5th and 6th when the promotional tweets were going out and the value of the coin was skyrocketing because while these people were hyping up a coin, people were putting in $100, $50, $20, whatever investment that they could to swing the value of the token upwards just by having the volume. Now by magnifying that scale again, by if one person puts in $100, not going to be that big of a deal. But let's say you have a thousand people putting in a hundred dollars each, that's really going to matter, okay? That's going to fluff that speculative value of that coin to its highest zenith, and then the various holders of that token who held massive volumes just basically dumped their coins onto the market. And because there was a code change, the whale code, the anti-whaling code, which prevented, which would have prevented all these account holders from dumping coins you know, it would limit their transactions to once every 24 hours was magically changed a day before, okay? So like just before the coin went live, they got rid of the anti-whaling code and the people who had the massive amount, the pre-sale tokens were just dumping that onto the market, killing the coin in progress. There wasn't gonna be any saving the kids, okay? The kids were never gonna be saved. Just put that through your heads. Now, since the release of my last video, Rice Gum, of all people, all right, which 
which is one of the people that I pointed out, actually singled in my title, was one of the key influencers brought onto the Save the Kids operation, said this during a live stream, okay? Let's roll that one. All right, look, we've made the decision to remove Ke Hey, yo! No but, no, but that's what I'm saying, though. No, no, look, and so he has suspended Jarvis, Nikon, and Tico because, um, you know. Phase, yo, K, yo, K, yo, me and, I told you guys, bro, me, me and K are hella close, like, me, like, me and K are hella close, so, you know what I'm saying, y'all talking about scamming and da-da-da, like, you know what I'm saying, hey, y'all need to tap in type shit, tap in, bro, yo, if y'all trying to scam, hit my line, bro, if y'all, yo, if y'all trying to scam, hit my line, y'all need to tap in with me. Again, I don't know if he's trying to be, like, hilarious right now by saying all this shit, but, like, when he's saying, hey, I'm close to Fraser, uh, or Kay in this case, if you're trying to scam, hit my line, it almost really sounds like he's trying to throw out some weird accusation. I'm not gonna put words in his mouth. I'm just saying, from first glance, it's kind of weird when he said that. Also, when you're involved in this kind of a token, you know, when you're involved in this controversy, it's probably not advisable to say that if you're trying to scam, hit up my line. I'm sure a judge wouldn't laugh at that like I know that rice has a history of trolling I'm gonna give you full disclosure but like at the same time bro there's times for you know joking and there's times to be serious right now I wouldn't be making jokes like that okay I'm just putting it out there that said though I'm gonna move on from here and focus on the next person now, the next target in this entire situation is a guy known as FaZe Nikon, okay? Nikon, whatever we're gonna go with. Now, Nikon did actually get back to me. I'm gonna just state for the record, I did try my best to communicate with some of these people. A lot of them didn't respond back. Some of them I couldn't communicate with. But to give Nikon the credit where he is, as lawyered up as he is, he did actually get back to me. So I'm just gonna mention that for the record. Anyways, looking at Nikon's wallet in this situation, all right, let's go look at what this guy did with Save the Kids again. Now, this wallet address, OXD1ABCA, is one that I'm linking to him because it's based on actual BNB transactions. So again, let's look at the blockchain, okay? It doesn't lie. Now in the blockchain, one of the actual BNB transactions that actually happened, which was substantial, is one that I'm gonna put out right here. OX7167DFF885. Now this wallet address, I want you to remember for a little bit, he sent 20 BNB twice within an hour period, okay? To understand how much 20 BNB is, let's look at the price on the transaction. So we're gonna open the transaction details and we're going to check the value at the time of transaction. So it was around 8,000 dollars that was sent. Now $8,000, and you can multiply that again, so $16,000 was sent to OX7167. Now this wallet, and this is a Excel spreadsheet that we were sent, which is alleged to be the Sam Pepper whitelist wallet, okay? This is something that was sent to us, and the reason why I can sort of get behind its legitimacy is that this will play a very key role in establishing uh, the, 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 the Save the Kids scam in general. So let's look at the top here. This is Send BNB. So you see how that wallet address, OX7167DFF885, matches to what was sent? This is a presale amount that these individuals would send to that wallet that would basically allow them to then get the pre-sale wallet tokens from the deployer address for Save the Kids. So now, let's go back to Nikon's wallet, the BEP20 token transactions. So Nikon here received from the deployer address, and I'm gonna change the age to match the times here, so 0605. He received 2.5 million tokens, okay? Now, he sold a chunk of tokens, but he still has 1.8 million sitting in his kids' token wallet wallet, all right? There are a couple things to point out, however, and we're going to look at them right now. Now, one thing I also want you guys to really look at in the transaction list, and I'm going to put this wallet address that you're going to keep in the back of your mind right now. This is OX02259. I want you to remember that string of characters because it's going to play a key role later on in this video. Now, he sent that account 8 BNB, which at the time of transaction was around $4,500. Why would Nikon's wallet be sending, on 0516, Nikon's alleged wallet be sending to this account that sum of money? Now, I've been using the term alleged wallet a lot in this video, and I'm just trying to cover legal basis. But if you look at just this transaction list, the founder wallet sent 2.5 million tokens, but this account didn't sell all of it. They they basically cashed out from what it seems like their initial investments. So remember, 
Remember when they sent those 20 BNB to that pre-sale wallet, OX716? They basically got the amount of token, they sold their initial investment, but if they're still holding on to tokens that have lost over like 85% of their value, it's kind of safe to say that this wallet holder did lose their money, okay? Like they, regardless to say, it isn't as bad as any other operator in this entire situation, okay? This, is, this isn't as egregiously terrible. It's bad that the participation happened, but they're still holding on to a good chunk of their token. I think it's about two thirds. In fact, the only guy in this entire scenario, Tico, who basically went by unscathed because neither me or Steven could really find his wallet addresses. And trust me, we tried. We actually ended up going to Keemstar and he reached out to Tico because Keemstar is involved with the phase guys pretty heavily. He ended up getting this confirmation from Tico. I never sold a single coin or made a single dollar off this. Legit have not sold any of it. Not even my own investment to put in. None. Zero. And he said, I need your wallet to clear you and then he gave his wallet address okay so at this point we're gonna audit phase tico and we're gonna try to isolate this guy from this situation because he is actually fairly innocent he might be the only motherfucker who wanted to save the goddamn kids so not only did he get the money from the deployer address he didn't dump a single token of kids and then he also bought more kids with his own money and at least that shows that he believed in this charity token idea the fact that this is the one account that we have found that received money from the deployer address and didn't dump a single token shows that tico is one of the most innocent people in this and should actually be let back into phased clan now let's move on to the actual big meat and potatoes of the entire situation okay this is a new development now this is something that i was waiting for i had to to wait for this video before I could make this one, okay? So here's a uh, Frazier actually responding. The truth about save the kids. I actually don't want to just watch this video by myself. So I'm going to call up my good friend Coffeezilla and we're going to sit down and react to this bumbling shit pile together, okay? So let's go right to that. All right, dude, let's watch this video. I All right. I've only seen this one time. I could it made me so upset, but I've, I've got to watch I've it. I've seen you. this a million times. Let's do it. One minute fifty eight seconds. Normally, audience, okay. we don't. I don't watch these things in full. I'll cut them up. I probably will do that, but it's not that long of a clip. Let's see what this apology is all about. I know I haven't posted in a while, and there is so much that I want to say about what's happened in the past month. But because of legal reasons, all I'm allowed to say right now is this: <laughs> Please. Please do not believe what you're hearing online. All of these people making videos think that they know the truth and that they know who's responsible when they just don't. Okay, all right, pause the 20 Stop seconds. Ah! Oh, dude, okay, listen, I could probably understand this for a million things, you know what I mean? I could probably understand like, hey, if we were running off speculations, like if we were some stupid T channel. However, we looked at the blockchain. You can't hide it. You used a technology blockchain that- Blockchain doesn't lie. You used a technology that literally trans- It keeps a log down to the second. Like how do you how do you how do you say you can't trust it? Come on, you bet you back traced the wallet through a giveaway. All right, which by the way, audience, there's a massive story on that. Just stay tuned. So this is the truth, all right? I lost money on Save the Kids token. Now, because I believe in fair and objective reporting, completely free from personal attachment, I'm going to give Fraser the complete pass here. What he said is actually true. If you go back to when we looked at Nikon's wallet with the 20 BNB transaction to OX716, which is the pre-sale wallet for Save the Kids, Fraser did give his own money to this wallet. And given on the dump and the dates lining up in the blockchain, it does in fact look like he didn't make any money regarding it, okay? In fact, I'm, I, I have to take him on his word. It does sound like he did lose money. So again, to be fair and objective, I am going to believe Fraser here regarding that state. And for full transparency, I didn't calculate every single dollar out of all of these Save the Kids sales. So maybe if he did go above the initial investment just by a bit, I certainly don't think it's substantial enough to even warrant the political fallout he's had in the entire community because of this Save the Kids token. But what actually upsets me the most is that anybody else was hurt. So we've uncovered significant evidence which confirms that a dishonest person- Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Okay. Yeah. So post editor notice, me and Steven decided to cut some sections out of this reaction like this one for legal reasons. Um, just because we really agree that speculation isn't the thing that we're going with. We're gonna try to keep that as out of this story as possible. And we're going to look at things from a factual point of view. So we're gonna really look at the blockchain for the most part. And when it comes to our personal speculation, we're removing it from these videos, okay? 
used his trust with me to scam everybody. This person gained my trust and the trust of my friends while still encouraging us to be the public faces of his scheme. He then abused that trust to go and alter the code right before launch, resulting in six figure profits for him and then leaving the rest of us to be blamed this is such a stupid argument right he's like this person all right whoever this person may be convinced my friends and i to be the public facing scheme of this and then change the code which the blockchain doesn't lie it's his alleged wallet that we trace back that does a crap ton of transactions per minute taking advantage of the anti-whale code change what how do you how do you defuse that? Those who are dealing with this manipulation and working with authorities to make sure he pays for what he's done, and I want to help as much as I can. And right now, the most powerful thing I have right now is my connection to you guys. You will never know how much I appreciate all of your support. And one way I can pay that forward is by making sure that this con man gets the justice that he deserves. Positive, positive, positive. <laughs> dude, dude, oh, dude. He wants this con man to go down, dude. The oh, con man. The, in the, the innocent guy right here. Oh, dude. All right, Can, we got- Does this go down as the uh, worst response video of all time? This, this might be the worst response video on fucking any platform that I've ever seen in today's day and age. This is like, like at least when we had the whole like CSGO lotto thing. Like they had a dog, they had some tears at least. You know what I mean? Maybe a modicum of admitting that they might have made a mistake. This is like no, This he's not taking accountability for anything. He's just like, whatever, this Bro, he's con he's playing man. the hero. He's playing the hero Ooh. and the victim at the same time. He's going, I was victimized. <laughs> and he goes, I'm gonna be the one to investigate this. We're conducting a very thorough, independent and aggressive investigation to find out exactly what happened and when and to do that most effectively, I need your help. If you lost any money on Save the Kids Token, please tell us your story on this email below so we can share it with our investigators. He's like, if you lost any money, did you see how hard the graph tanked, bro? <laughs> I think it suffice to say most people lost their money. <laughs> oh my gosh, I honestly want to send, Fra I, I want to send Fraser an email. I lost money with Save the Kids. Again, further to keep the video objective, we're just cutting any form of unnecessary speculation out and also to protect things legally. Let's move on. We want to provide the authorities with all the evidence they need to take the proper action. And with your help, we can hold him accountable and make sure he's never able to do this sort of thing again. It's like, it's so hilarious. Again, I have to keep stating this in the video. If they just did entitle this Save the Kids coin, if they just called it Come in My Asshole coin or something like that, immediately would have gotten away. I wouldn't have looked at it. I don't think you would have looked at no. it. I think we would have no, joked dude. about it. 100%. All right, well. It's going to get worse. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Take care. So you can probably understand that I really fucking hate it when this kind of a person ends up saying, don't believe these YouTubers. They don't know the truth. No, I'm going to sit down over here. And I'm going to take you down a rabbit hole to show you a new level of scumbaggery. So let's sit down. Okay, now giveaway is where you give away money to usually, you know, random people, especially your fans, right? A lot of people do them. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at Phase K's giveaways, okay? Okay, so at this point, me and Coffee decide, let's go look at some giveaways. Maybe we can find a discrepancy. And to say the least, what we found is pretty alarming. So to understand, let's go back to how we found this wallet that's alleged to belong to Fraser. So basically, we looked at Fraser's Twitter history before the tweets got deleted, and we found a giveaway for Safe Galaxy, where Fraser was giving away Fit Safe Galaxy tokens. Someone on Twitter joined that giveaway, and they gave their own personal wallet address. Now, Fraser said this person won, and now at this point, we took that winner's wallet address, punched it into the blockchain, and basically rounded up the dates, you know, matched them up, and found a safe galaxy transaction. So then we looked at the wallet that sent this winner, the safe galaxy, which again, if this is a giveaway, that wallet should technically belong to Fraser. So this OX5AF wallet we clicked on and we looked at all of its history. So one of the things it was involved in was the pre-sale to save the kids token and also the various other giveaways that we're going to mention going on forward. The giveaways in this question that Fraser has done is uh, Eclipse token, safe galaxy, and Titscoin. All of these tweets are right here. 
So what we're effectively doing here is we're going to take these tweets, we're going to look at the dates as much as we can, and we're going to look at the blockchain address for these 0x5AF, or what we believe to be Fraser's alleged wallet. We're going to line up a transaction of Titscoin, Safe Galaxy, or Eclipse where it's applicable, and we're going to see what accounts it's sending to. Because the idea is, if this wallet receives a bunch of the giveaway coin, the next transactions on that same day will most definitely be to the actual winners. It's it's very likely that's how the story pans out, okay? That's how a giveaway is at least, in my opinion, believed to work. Okay, so what you're about to witness right now is some serious fucking, like, brain damage in the making, okay? Are you guys ready for this shit? All right, so what we did over here is we was basically, we looked at this one Eclipse giveaway, right? Which effectively, he got it from the Deployer account from Eclipse, and then he started giving these out. So 8.7 billion, 8.7 billion, 8.7 billion, right? So we know that this giveaway happened. Now, what we did was we took the all these addresses that won the giveaway, and we decided, wait a minute... Are they lucky enough to win another fucking giveaway from Fraser? Uh, usually the odds of that happening are pretty fucking nil. But, you know, at least from the Minecraft community, we've seen that odds, well, as slim as they are, sometimes they can come true, right? Let's go check some of these odds out, okay? Uh, let's go find one random wallet, okay? Let's go find one wallet that we found in this situation, okay? So one of the winners here was, uh, let's go see OX, I think it's OX78, all right? Yeah, OX78E, won 8.7 billion token, right? Now, basically, you can do the exact same thing. So let's say we want to check it against any token blockchain. You're going to type in Safe Galaxy BSC Scan, and you're going to hit the Safe Galaxy token tracker bsc scan now this is going to give you the token for the bsc scan and over here you can press this little button and you can enter that address in so all we have to do is copy the oh uh, what is it ox78 so let's uh let's just copy that address so the ox 7080 we're going to copy that to the clipboard we're going to go to safe galaxy and we're just going to hammer that in into the search okay we're going to do the same thing for tits coin right here we're going to go into the wallet we're going to just jam that in there and we're going to check everything, okay? We're going to do the same thing for Save the Kids as well because fuck it, why not? Let's see if we can get double, let's see if we can get killing sprees across the fucking board. So now we know that we know in this Eclipse token, Fraser gave the Eclipse token, okay? So this is an Eclipse token check. He gave it to OX78E. OX78E did whatever the shenanigans they wanted. Is OX78E lucky enough to win Safe Galaxy giveaway? Now, if you look at the time here, I'm going to show you. That was 76 days ago, okay? Again, let's look at the Safe Galaxy. So that was 67 days ago, all right? So if you look at it, 0506. So that was, you can, you can correlate that with some of these tweets that are made. So I'm going to show you again with the safe galaxy giveaway right here's a uh, safe galaxy right this is the craziest thing i've ever done i'm gonna double your safe galaxy wallet right may 5th all right what's that time there kiddos may fucking 6th okay so maybe it's a little day off but it's still in may it's around that time okay is uh is 7080 lucky enough to win of course he is ox5 af 8d 67 b22 Fraser's wallet sends that safe galaxy, literally doubles the amount, which then gets dumped, dude, a minute, like literally no time after. But now is this a, okay, listen, winning one giveaway, lucky enough. You can win two giveaways. Can he win the tits coin too? Of course he fucking can. OX5AF8D67B22. Guys, they also want, they want all three giveaways and immediately dumped. But now did they also want to save the kids? Let's go look at this wallet. It. Dude, they got the founder for Save the Kids. The founder wallet sent them Save the Kids token, which were dumped. They only have fucking 6.9 kids left, dude. They've got nothing. I want people to know for tits token, since there's no actual day on the tweet that I could find, just keep the idea of 72 days ago. I want you, I want you to remember that in the giveaway, all right? Uh, that's sort of the timeline I'm going with these blockchains. 72 days ago is kind of that rough point. Anyways... I'm just mentioning all this for full clarity. All right, let's go find it. All right, let's see. Maybe we can find one more, right? Shit. What is this OXB4? Maybe that 8.7 million? Well, shit, fuck my asshole. Let's see what this dude's all about, huh? So if you open up OXB4, all right, let's go. Let's go copy that address and let's go toss that motherfucker right into the eclipse check, okay? So we're going to go in, we're going to put all this in and we're going to see if this dude's winning. 
Oh, look at that. So they won the they won the giveaway. We just saw that. They won it from Fraser, right? OX5AF 8D67B22. All right. They gave him 8.7 billion token. Immediately pretty much dumps most of it. All right. Are they lucky enough to win Safe Galaxy? You bet your ass they are. 0605. So around the same timeline, May 5th. All right. Look at that. Fraser, OX5AF 8D67B22. Won that giveaway as well. Wait a minute. T but did they win tits coin? Let's go check that out. 72 fucking days ago. OX5AF 8D67B22. He won all three fucking giveaways. But did they do save the kids? Let's check that out, okay? Wait a minute. They got it from the Save the Kids founder. What the fuck is this? <laughs> they got the token. They sold it. They got no kids. Kids. Can we find another one? I bet your asshole we can. Look at that. OX49. That one, 10.4 billion. All right, let's go see what this token's all about. Let's go capture this dude's address and let's check what Eclipse tokens this motherfucker was getting. Wait, okay, so they won the giveaway, right, from Fraser, all right, around 75 days ago, right? You know, they got that, they got that, they got that good old Eclipse token right here, Eclipse. They got that, dumped it out, all right? But wait, did they win Save Galaxy? Wait a minute. Oh my god. It's like they fucking won Safe Galaxy as well. OX5AF 8D67B22. What a fucking coinky dink. They won it, dumped it, won it again, dumped it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait just a goddamn minute. Did they win tits coin? Wait a minute. They got tits coin right here. OX5. Oh my god, they did. OX5AF 8D67B22. They fucking won it and dumped it. Uh, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Aside from dumping, you know, the breast cancer charity token, let's see if they'd also did the save the kids. And would you look at that? They have the founder's address, dumped it, bought it, dumped it, bought it, dumped it. Okay, kind of day trader-ish, but yo, they were dumping it. They had the pre-sale token, they dumped it. How weird is it that we found three fucking giveaway winners, it seems, that won all three giveaways and participated. Wait a minute. Did this wallet OX49A get any money from the Fraser wallet? Oh wait, easier way. Let's view all incoming transact. Oh my God, it did get money. OX5AF 8D67B22, 15 BNB. How much was that at the time of tra- Wow, this guy won all three giveaways and got $5,308. Oh fuck my asshole. That's a level of coincidences I didn't fucking believe existed, God. Damn! Now, sometimes winners aren't so fucking lucky, okay? This account over here won the giveaway. OX3A7EB won the Eclipse giveaway. They were not lucky enough to win the Safe Galaxy giveaway. However, they were also kind of lucky enough to win the Titscoin giveaway. OX5AF8D67B22 uh, basically received a shit ton of money that then got dumped. However, let's look at their Save the Kids wallet. Wow, they received the they received the deployer wallet? They received the pre-sale token and then dumped it? Man, there's a lot of fucking commonality. You guys want to know something even fucking wilder? So this OX3A17, this giveaway winner, you want to know who else he got money from? ox 78 e 75 Why the fuck is that shit so familiar? You want to know why that's so familiar? Why is this account giving money? Because, just go back five minutes, this is the same fucking account, ox 78 e that also won all of Fraser's fucking giveaways. Now apparently the giveaway winners have become such good friends, they're fucking fine financing one another ah uh, here take two bnb how much was that worth at the time yeah just, just take 700 bucks dude we're 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 rolling good right now for has just been keeping us fucking winning now i really i really want to hear the response to this i i have to imagine it can't be anything uh it can't be anything more wait a minute wait a goddamn minute wait a fucking second ox3 a17 is not only a fucking winner but he also put two fucking BNB into OX7167DFF8851EAD. Why is that important? That's mentioned in the Sam Pepper whitelist investigation sheet that I have. That saved the kids presale token. Holy shit. The con dude, the web of intrigue is st dude. This web is stickier than a fucking incest family. What do you want me to say? There's listen. 
I would love for Fraser to refute this. He spent a minute, 59 seconds making a bullshit apology video when I don't know if he expected that we would have dug this up. If this isn't giveaway fraud, I honestly don't fucking know what is, okay? Me and Coffee sat down for seven hours looking for fucking patterns, okay? We were the ones looking for NSA tier grit patterns on crypto fraud. This, if this isn't giveaway fraud, I have no fucking idea what is, okay? These accounts that I've shown you won every giveaway, most of them, they also were invested in Save the Kids, they also received extra money from Fraser, and now they're sending money back and forth between each other. If this isn't a sticky web of intrigue, I fucking don't know what is. So this list that I was mentioning over here that me and Coffee had gotten, OX7167, the Sam Pepper pre-sale whitelist wallet. Now, again, the, the source here is pretty much as obscure and anonymous as you want. And to kind of confirm that this isn't really bullshit, at least in our eyes, we ended up looking at every single wallet address and basically, and you can take all these addresses for yourself and you can put them into BSC scan and get a pretty fucking good idea of what's actually going on. So the idea over here that I'm looking at, all right, this is how we came to the conclusion. This is how we came to prove that there's some aura of legitimacy proper. Even though the source here is anonymous, I want to just show you the method to the madness. So here I took, for instance, this is where I was investigating. Coffee started from the top. I did the bottom. So I'm going to show you what I did. So this account, OXOAB828DC2DF, is one wallet address that I was looking at, right? So the idea that we did was we took this address, we checked, did they sell STK? So basically, were they part of that pre-sale, okay? Did they have those founder tokens? I said yes, and then we checked how fast they sold. So basically, when did they get the money from that pre-sale deployer wallet, and then when did they sell immediately after? In some cases, it was like three hours, okay? So three hours, three hours, there was a pattern that we discovered. We then checked who was funding them, and then we also checked if they had bot-like transactions. So here I'm gonna show you what's going on, okay? And you can take all of these addresses and audit them for yourself, just so you can see the correlation on this sheet. I, I'm gonna fully say this was done at like one in the morning. There may be like one mistake, one misinterpretation, but in general, I stand by our investigation on this sheet. So let's take this wallet address and pop it in to save the kids token check. So this wallet address, OXO, that we were just looking at over here, I'm gonna check what's going on, all right? So this guy ended up getting from the deployer address, so OX401, right? They ended up getting this token. Now here I'm gonna show you the time, right? So they basically got it 0605 26, all right? Once they had gotten it, they bought more from PancakeSwap, and then literally within an hour, all right? So three hours, so one in the mo two in the morning almost, they started dumping this shit en masse. Now what's, what I'm classifying as potentially a bot, or it could also just be a group of people sitting on a Telegram or Discord chat coordinating a dump, is basically, look at these transaction timings, right? So within a fucking minute, they did a transaction. And of course, the value is always the same. And roughly, it's like, hey, a few seconds afterwards, you know, 30 seconds, 50 seconds, whatever you want to call it. Now, this could be a bot, you know, so let's say in the programming, the bot who is selling these orders could basically just go out and say, okay, listen, sell an order, pick a random time between, pick a random number between 30 and 90. Let's assume 30 and 90 are seconds in the code. So that bot would basically sell erratically, right? Maybe once every 32 seconds, once every 60 seconds, kind of mimicking a human being. There's also a very good chance that this is a bunch of real people sitting in a real Discord call coordinating these dumps together, right? Now, at the end of the day, all right, regardless of whether it's a computer bot or a telegram group, it's a very good sign to tell you this dump was premeditated, thought well in advance, save the kids, was doomed from the fucking start. Now, moving alongside from one of the shadiest giveaways that I've ever seen on the platform, it's time to move our sights to what I think is the guy operating a lot of these deals behind the scenes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you this article. Meet Jordan Galen, one of FaZe Clan's mighty managers. As the industry of pro gaming continues to develop and grow, I'm going to skip a little bit down over here. Galen, a senior talent manager at FaZe Clan, you can look that up on LinkedIn, by the way, one of the most popular esports gaming orgs in the world, took time out of his busy 
crazy day. Back in 2010, FaZe Clan got started as a YouTube channel called FaZe Sniping. Let's go down even further. Galen would first join FaZe Clan in 2018 as a talent operations manager, assisting the talent managers with their day-to-day -day and special projects for whatever their talent needed very quickly. It became evident that I would be able to better assist the company if I were assisting talent directly instead of the managers. Galen came into the position with plenty of experience, having previously co-founded a digital marketing agency called Limits Group with none other than Tav Cooperman, which is, by the way, Banks's manager, the manager of FaZe Banks and Temper. As Galen describes it, Limits Group's main focus was managing talent. So this isn't a small guy by any endeavor, okay? You can actually look up fights of, uh, what is it, uh, fucking Jarvis literally going on not too long ago with him in the actual promotional material for set fight. But why am I mentioning this guy? Why is he in the tar? Because not only does he have severe proximity to all these people, there is something he does beyond talent management. Okay, let's go check it out. So, yeah, guys, look, we're super excited to get started. Um, Frazier's ready to kind of start formulating and drafting his tweets for tonight. I mean, look, you know, like wait, I told wait, you. Wait, don't drop any tweets yet, Fraser. Not yet. We got okay. people still buying. Get tell your people to buy first. Okay, we'll do that. But we'll, we'll formulate them. But what we were thinking is a good way to kind of get started is if we could do some form of giveaway to give back to people who are... Would you look at that? Is that our boy Jordan Galen and fucking Fraser sitting together discussing a potential cryptocurrency deal in Mom's Basement Studio, a podcast that I was a part of with Keem and Bang. So yeah, I, this all happened in literally the FaZe house, okay? Now, understandably, Banks told me that this uh, Fraser was living with him in that house. It's a big house, and this is a studio that is shared around, I guess you could say it's like a soundproof area area whatever that's full discrepancy i'm just mentioning it it's fucking insane that this guy all right fraser and his partner manager his talent guy his his manager jordan galen are sitting in mom's basement studio discussing a crypto deal for something called ape haven all right so how do i know ape haven was a deal right well ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna show you some good old fucking receipts for this now, this is one chat that I was sent from Jordan Galen and an individual known as Drew Roberts. Who is Drew Roberts? He was the actual person behind Ape's Haven token, Ape's token, this token deal that actually didn't go through. Now, over here, Jordan Galen mentions a wallet address, OX5AF867B22Bomber. Isn't that Fraser's alleged wallet? His wallet, huh? Jordan Galen, that says 562, 500,000 USD Heather, which is a stable coin. For those of you who don't know what a stable coin, let me show you that real quickly. Uh, a stable coin, so for instance, this is USDT, which is what they're mentioning. This is actually a coin that sticks basically close to US dollars. So if there's basically the idea of a stable coin is this coin is backed apparently by currency. Again, there's a lot of shady stuff behind this, but USD Tether in this case basically says that, hey, if it's going to keep itself on par with the US dollar. So if you get USD Tether in crypto, that should be backed and that should be as stable as actual US currency. Again, there's a lot of stuff behind this. It's a whole separate video topic of itself, but that's what a stable coin is. So it's safe to understand, ladies and gentlemen, when Jordan Galen here is talking about 562,000 USD tether, okay, that's fucking half a million dollars, all right, plus 337,000 apes, including 150,000 to give away to fans, right? Again, we've seen the history of giveaways. I don't know how those giveaway, I don't know how legit that giveaway would actually be. Then, of course, they're talking about more of these pricing. So here, I guess he's gotten some USD tether. So about like $20,000 worth of it, 22 or 22,000. And here you've got Drew giving his BTC address as well. This is going to come into play. In fact, we'll actually look at this real quickly. Now, I don't want you to think that this is something that is bullshit. The video thing that I showed you, this is literally a discussion these guys had with Drew. I talked to Drew Roberts, and he basically denied that this deal was going to go through. The reason this deal didn't go through, according to my interview with Drew, was that, honestly, they just couldn't go on a handshake. You don't just give somebody half a million fucking dollars, okay? Without, you know, you don't just give anybody half a milli, all right, at all. All right, on a handshake. Okay, there's got to be some contracts. Um, okay. I found that they were both upstanding. Uh, Sam Pepper, we first paid to do three tweets. Uh, he did two of them. Um, and then he didn't do the last one. And he sent me back a third of, or a third of the money we paid him to do that. 
Do you know um, how much you uh, paid him for just three tweets? It was fifteen grand. So he sent back five grand. Okay. So um, oh wow. He, so fifteen thousand yeah. or fifteen hundred? I just Canadian. Yeah, 15, so. 000. Yeah, fifteen thousand okay. dollars, U.S. dollars at the time. It was in Ethereum, so it's worth less now. Uh, this was this was in mid-May. Okay. Uh, and then and then we agreed to a deal with with Fraser uh, to do a promotion for the the token, the Apeven token. And with that one, uh, we were mainly working with a couple other people on this team, and kind of went through Sam Pepper. Uh, but then Fraser was getting involved, which you know I guess you've seen in the video. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was mainly just kind of executing he, what he was doing, and we had we agreed to a deal with for around five hundred grand, half a million, uh, for him and wow, a number okay. of his. And that uh, that his, half a million is just Fraser. No, it was a number of connections. So okay. Fraser and his manager were setting it up, um, and then we paid him twenty grand up front as a test run, and then. We ended up not paying for the whole thing, and I don't want the twenty grand back. It was a, uh, you know, it was kind of like a consulting fee. He did it, and it was coming off the total. I asked Drew if Fraser, for instance, could have asked to help develop or hire programmers for any other token here. So right. for Fraser, is he was he involved more? Do you, like do, can you can you tell like was he looking for things like developers or anybody that was going to handle any back end operation? No, uh, somebody else on the phase team had asked me to do some tokens for them. Um, and he asked to remain anonymous when I told him I was going to do an interview about this. Um, oh, okay. So somebody there, else. Yeah, so somebody else was. But Frazier is the one that has a lot of these great connections. He has built up goodwill for a long period of time with other influencers in the space. So it's a bit weird to hear about this anonymous person of the organization. I mean, that is a very, very weird flag to raise. And it's definitely something I want to follow up on. But moving forward, I asked Drew Roberts about these people and if the, if the FaZe organization itself was involved or whether this was a rogue element within FaZe taking deals on their own. Back to the initial point, it just seems that the FaZe manager that or the FaZe contact that you had at this moment, right? Did they then yeah. set up this deal basically with half a million on the table? Like... Well, I looked at yeah. the, yeah. So half yeah. a million on the table. So the FaZe Clan guys were order, ordering this with you. So they, they were running a half a million. Yeah. They were, and they made it very clear they're doing outside of FaZe, their, their eSports team. They're doing outside as all individual influencers uh, on a personal level, which I think is where the main beef comes in with, because FaZe as a team has been offered amazing deals from the likes of coinbase and others to do mm-hmm. their own token do their own coin even uh and they have a bunch of nft deals in the works so they had somebody else on their team had asked me to take a look at um and they they're not going to risk any of that for a shit coin um so, so someone so within phase yeah. so yeah. someone within phase comes to you organizes deal but wants it to be independent of them i mean it's almost impossible to do that on a handshake deal, right? Like, it's very difficult. Yeah. I mean, it's why I didn't get mine done. We paid twenty grand, and we have not. My team of pre-sellers didn't trust me enough to get the rest of it put in, uh, and so that was that. That's the challenge with it. It's like if you not you don't have a regular contract, like in the real world, it's tough to get the deliverables that you want on the time schedule that you want them on. So it's safe to say that this this Fraser, like Fraser and whoever his contact is within Face Clan, uh, have done way more than just save the kids. This is like sort of a repeat pattern, right? At least for their end, like they've just been, yeah. I think know. Sam Pepper's the one who's who's developed this trend and makes a lot of money. And when you have one influencer making a lot of money executing something, you know, essentially an advertising deal, mm-hmm. when you have them making a lot of money doing an advertising deal, other influencers want to be involved. Uh, and they're looking for ways. Now, when they get involved, they may not realize the repercussions of making money this way. It's not like a traditional advertising deal. There are It's a marketing, but it's more like an affiliate marketing program, a multi-level marketing program where there are, you know, and people in the real world, we backlash against what it looks like an injustice yeah. to the fans. And for fair reporting, I just want to say Drew Roberts did confirm that whenever he worked with these guys, all right, he had a he had a positive vibe with it. Okay, this what this the, there wasn't any ill will from his part towards any of these individuals, and I want to include that just for the sake of clarity. 
I had good dealings with Sam Pepper and and Frazier, mm-hmm. uh, and then through them met a few other people on the phase team. Uh, I have some recordings. I, I record all my Zoom calls, so uh, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. look like you're, you're recording this one. But if you want to, you're welcome to. Oh yeah, no, I've uh, I've hit the I've hit the record on it. Just uh, that's why I was telling you in the beginning. I just wanted to. <laughs> So here you can kind of see some idea, at least from Fraser, when they were discussing the apes token that didn't go through. You can actually see that he received 4.8 million apes. All right. So ape token right over here. And then promptly within that deal, uh, he actually did send that money back. So you can see that after the I guess when the deal didn't go through, Fraser's account then gave it back to OX7C87D, which if you look to the actual threat chain matches the wallet address that Drew Roberts has mentioned in this text thread. Now I'm gonna leave this where it's at. This is a deal that did not go through, okay? But as you can imagine, looking at the amount, the USD tether, half a million on the line, that's the kind of money I think that I'm starting to expect with a lot of these deals. When I first analyzed the actual value of each pump and dump treated separately on its own and the transactions based on the blockchain, it didn't seem like a whole lot of money to me but when half a million dollars is starting to get tossed around and that's just on one deal even if it's spread across creators that is a pretty decent chunk of money now I want to shift my attention towards Aiden Ross which is a deal that actually did happen and we're gonna use the blockchain to break it down piece by piece Now, for full context over here, Aiden Ross actually was partaking in a deal regarding MILF token, okay? Now, on May 26, 2021, according to this tweet by MILF token, they said, go tune in to Aiden Ross's Twitch for a surprise. Twitch TV, Aiden Ross, retweet May 26, 2021 at 10 p.m., okay? That's when the post was going on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go watch this entire thing play by play, and we're going to use the blockchain to figure out just how much this deal was actually actually worth and how it all transpired so let's watch this this is from an actual vod with aiden ross about to buy a milf token i'm going to cut through about a bit of this stuff but let's get into it okay so we know jordan galen we know that he's did with fraser let's go on further okay uh i got two more things to say about milf x which went milf in the chat if you guys want to buy uh right now i'm going to buy some of milf on stream right now and again we are uh i'm gonna be giving out twenty thousand of this shit later remember i'm not a financial advisor so don't i'm this is i'm literally getting paid bro i'm getting paid for this shit i'm being honest with you guys so all right let's see how that flies up in court he's not a financial advisor he did get he did mention later that he got paid a fat bag for this one and he hopes that you didn't buy this token by the way chat by the way that milf token shit i did a while back i already told you guys don't buy that shit i got paid a bag to do that shit <laughs> like i don't give a fuck i hope none of you guys actually bought it <laughs> uh, I'm gonna... Now, interestingly enough, here we're gonna look at this address, okay? So here he's got account one on MetaMask and he says OX1B71. Now, I'm gonna show you right here. On the right, this is a, this is the actual transaction going on, okay? So May 27th, all right, just shortly after this entire ordeal went through, okay? So this is May 27th. This is like literally the day after, okay? So like two, two, this is, this is, this is the actual account, OX1B71. I want everybody to know that. So you can see right here, he has 1000 USDC, okay? Now, if you look into this account real quick, all right, we're actually going to go look at his ERCC token. So an OX1B71, we're actually going to go see what his tokens are, okay? So... So, according over here, from OX02225944, the Alette Jordan Galen wallet, okay, this is sending 1,000 USDC. So that 1,000 USDC isn't far to believe that he actually got this account, all right, this token, straight from this Alette Jordan Galen account. So let's go further. Now, here's where a new Pokemon gets introduced to the party. Listen to this voice real quick. Buy on Uniswap. Uh-huh. No, no, click buy on Uniswap on the website. Yeah, 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 yeah. Click? Yeah. Okay, select now USDC, select the token, click USDC. Man, that almost sounds like it's Jordan Galen. I mean, you'd have to really listen to the voices from that mom's basement clip in this one. But uh, I'm just going to say, listen, all right, I'm not, a, I'm not an auditory expert, but that sounds pretty close to me, dude. And I think I have pretty good hearing. I'm just thinking. Okay, select now USDC, select the token, click USDC. Uh, we'll do that, but we'll, we'll formulate them. But what we were thinking is a good way to kind of get started is if we could do some form of giveaway to give back to people who are. Yeah, run that, run that, run that. It doesn't let me. 
Hold on, I'm sending you Ethereum right now. Wait 30 seconds. Okay. He's sending him Ethereum? Wait 30 seconds? Alright, sure, we'll wait 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, wait, did you get it? Wait, what transaction? <gasps> oh! Wait a minute. Ah! I gotta let him scream in my ear first. So he ended up getting about 0 0.1826 ETH, okay? So is that gonna show up on the blockchain? You bet your asshole. You bet your ass it shows up on the blockchain. Pro tip, look at that transaction ID and you can cross-reference for yourself. Oh, look at that! 0 0.18. Who sent that? Jordan Galen. We just had to wait 30 seconds. The alleged Jordan Galen wallet sent him 0 0.18 Ethereum, okay? So literally right there, 0527, bam! Right there we got sent that money, okay, to this account. Now, what did he do after? Well, let's look at what the blockchain says. So, literally, one thing to note is that's 241.47, right? So, immediately right after, right after this 241.47, he should be buying that MILF token at 245, okay? So, let's see. Let's go forward a little bit, a few minutes. All right, All right so let's much, see. Sir. How much to How much token is that? MILF, 11050000. Wow, that's the same amount we see. Blockchain ain't lying. Now, of course, that proves that transaction got done. So right there, we use the blockchain to basically time that stream bot down to a fucking T. But let's see the amount of money that actually got fucking sent. So in this case, we're going to go to Jordan Galen's uh, alleged wall wall wallet, 0x02259442, right? So in the actual ethereum chain for that wallet let's see what happened on the 27th okay let's see what transactions they were making so right over here you can see that the one transaction to ox1b71 which let's go back just a little bit yeah ox1b they sent that money to them right so 0527 let's see the token transactions that happened on 0527 so on 0520 fucking seven they get this address right so ox63dd sends one thousand usd coin they also send one hundred and eighty six thousand usd coin so let's see what usd coin is it's another stable fucking currency okay this currency let me look at the price it's one dollar okay in fact you can do usdc to usd and get a price ticker right now usd coin on coindesk right now is priced to one fucking dollar all right it is a stable coin it's how it's built so they ended up getting about $186,000 worth of this fucking coin. All right, you can literally see on the day of transaction that was $186,524,000. So just a little bit over. But what else did the same account, OX63, that sent them all this money also send? Go one above 145 million MILF token, okay? All right, that's how much got fucking sent over. That's how much money, that's the fucking bag that was paid. Do you get that, audience? That's the fucking bag we're talking about. About almost, almost $200,000. That's how much it costs to take your fans, to, to bring your fans along for the MILF token ride and get them losing their fucking cash. And again, I'd honestly love to hear a refutation. I'd love to hear that, no, 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 this money wasn't for MILF token. Bro, when the same wall is giving you nearly 200,000 US dollars and then the MILF token? I mean, what conclusion do you want me to come to? Now, at the same time, I don't think anything here is illegal. Uh, maybe it's like an FTC violation. I, I, If anything, I actually don't see any real deal of pumping and dumping. The guy literally advertised the coin and if he followed every rule right, then sure, whatever. He got paid a fat bag, an unethical fat bag, but a fat bag no less, all right? And if it is legal, legal, all right, then it is legal, but I have my doubts based on how they advertise this. Then again, those are my doubts. I'd love refutations. That's what I'm here for. Fair and balanced reporting. Now, we're going to look at FaZe Banks real quick, okay? Now, FaZe Banks is one of the highest level guys over at FaZe Clan, okay? And he's been under the ire for his connection to Bank Social. People are looking at him as a potential guy that is promoting these cryptocurrencies. Now, I'm going to give this a fair objective look. I've been talking to FaZe Banks over the course of the week, and some of the calls have gotten heated, some of them are. Now, full connection, I am friendly with the guy. He is a friend of mine, but that's not going to be a case for me. If he's guilty, he's guilty, okay? Now, we're going to look at all of this as a team here, okay? So that wallet, 0x022, right? That 0x0225944, that alleged Jordan Galen wallet in this case. All right, one thing, I just got to have my notes on the side here real quick. Give me a second. 
Yeah, with the uh, FAD1 ending, AFAAD1 ending, all right? This is the alleged Jordan Galen wallet. It keeps showing up between Fraser, between Aiden Ross, and now FaZe Banks here, okay? Now, FaZe Banks was part of this bank social deal that didn't exactly go through. Now, at this point, I'm not going to speak for what I don't exactly know and what I haven't heard myself. CoffeeZilla actually had an interview with Bank Social, and that CEO told Coffee one thing, while Banks told him another thing. So there were a multitude of, like, there, there was a couple discrepancies in the interviews between these two individuals. But from what I heard, the actual uh, CEO of Bank Social is one of those guys that definitely wanted to promote his own coin, no matter what, and there was... A, the deal was just bad all around, okay? It didn't exactly pan through. Both sides really have nothing negative to say to one another. What I'm actually interested in is how the bank social transaction got done. What Banks told me was that he was paid 69 Ether, a sort of a consulting fee, for being part of this project, something that they were going to go on with long term. Of course, this is a bit up in the air. I'm just interested in seeing how Banks received the money for this deal, the 69 Ethereum that he was given. So let's check that transaction out. Now, looking at this transaction, OX022, you can actually see it's sending banks, phasebanks.eth, his phasebanks' his actual Ether account, 69 Ether. So things are checking out so far. But let's go to Jordan's wallet and check what happened on his account, 0528. So let's click on this Jordan alleged wallet real quick that's somehow involved with all these members. Again, I'm just saying it for legal reasons. Ha, huh, look at that! It seems like Jordan actually received this alleged wallet from OX0E99. Who's OX0E99? Uh, this seems to actually be all the people related to just bank social. You can probably see by their ERC-2020. Yeah, it's literally all just bank social transactions. So, he got paid 82 Ether. 82 Ether, right? He got paid that much money. That's about 100, that's almost 200,000 fucking dollars in this case, okay? A lot of fucking money. He gives banks 69 of that Ether that he just received in this moment, literally within an hour, okay? So, banks ended up getting, what, like 167,000? So Banks actually told us that he didn't even know that this finder's fee type, this looks like a finder fee to the average person, right? Jordan took a little fee out of whatever he gave Banks, right? So Banks got 69 Ether, but Jordan kept 82, right? So Jordan keeps a, a modest sum of 13 Ether. The alleged Jordan wallet keeps 13 Ether. Banks confirmed to me this wasn't in his knowledge. He didn't know anything about this, all right? He had no fucking clue. <laughs> Look, he's operating off on his own. Because, look, I'm looking at this, right? And when I see Jordan Galen taking a cut, I see a classic manager-sponsor deal, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, that's before, yeah. before, I thought it was, oh, Kay's working on his own deal. But hang on, hang on, hang on. I do want to say this. I do want to say this. Yeah. In that sense, it would probably be in reverse because that's typically how things go. The talent gets paid first, and then out of that, some um, whatever was agreed on gets split up from then. That's how it usually works. That's not how it worked in this case. I didn't get the fucking whatever number you, you said, the 80 ETH and then chipped off whatever else. You know what I'm saying? That's not it's, how that, that right. happened. No, 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 no. I, it I, was I, in the I reverse. Agree. It's still, but, but nonetheless, the fact no, that management's hey, hey, that's, getting but, a cut still looks bad. But that's, and, but that's a fair but that's a fair point, though. Of course. That of is, course, that course. is a fair point. It's like, of course. Now, at this point, we have to look further into Banks' wallet. Now, this is a discrepancy that Banks didn't know about when we confronted him, okay? So let's go back to Banks' wallet, OX7D. Now, if you use MetaMask, which Banks confirms that he uses MetaMask, if you create a MetaMask account, you will immediately also get the exact same address on the BSC scan network. So you see how we're on Ether scan, right? If you go to BSC and you take any Ether address and you can just slap that right in there, you can see that that Ether address shows up. Now, banks made no transactions on this BSC scan account that was made alongside the MetaMask, right? But if you go to the BEP20 tokens, banks has five fucking trillion of the moon portal token now banks has done nothing with the moon portal token okay if you look at this moon portal token as it is right now it's just sitting there on an account doing nothing okay banks literally has not touched this and when confronted about it banks actually had no fucking idea he sent us a text message that he shared with jordan on the day of when confronted by me and coffee okay so i'm going to show you that text real quick 
So on June 26, this is Banks texting good old Jordan over here. Yo, wh whoever Moon Portal is and whatever that is, can you tell them to stop advertising that I work for or with them? I don't even know what that is. And you and I've never worked with them, and they're fucking telling people that we work together. Not sure who... Not sure who Moon Portal is, but let me look into it and tell them to stop it right away, brother. Seriously, Jordan. On it. Please send me a screenshot of what you're talking about. Send it to me, brother, so I can kill it. I know a lot of people involved in the space and can get connected. Getting on a flight very soon. Yeah, so this actually kind of vindicates Banks a little bit. He has no fucking idea. And then Jordan, the guy he's texting. And remember, this was done on a call with me, Coffee, and Banks. So, I again, I, he doesn't really have the time to Photoshop any of this. He took a screenshot of his phone in front of us, sent it to us on a call. And this is this this is what it is. So he talks to this Jordan, Jordan Gale, G J G Jordan Galen, who's, uh you know, he's like, what the fuck is going on? Not sure who Moon Portal is. Not sure who Moon Portal is. Well... There's an easy way to figure out bullshit in the blockchain, okay? Because it's all truthful up in this bitch. Now, this is the bank's address again. So let's go down and look who sent him the 5 trillion moon portal. It's O0OX0D67. So if you open that wallet address up right here, you're actually going to go to the token of moon portal, right? Now, if you click on this address, okay, it takes you to OX0D67. Now, from what I'm understanding in this address, okay, it's literally just a moon portal address, all right? So it's, all its BEP20 tokens are just fucking moon portal. In fact, if you look at all of its transaction history, the last one that ever gets into it, well, it's, it's literally just a contract situation, okay? It's just the moon portal. It's the moon portal wallet. Now, let's go to the Moon Portal token itself and put in a couple searches. So I put in Galen's, all right, Jordan Galen's alleged wallet right here, and it took me to, hey, look at that. Is that the same account that sent to banks 2.5 trillion token? Well, let's see, 0x0d6769? Let's see, let's see where uh, Banks got his wallet from, okay? The only thing that he was sent, oh, look at that, OX0D6769. So the same account sent to that Jordan Galen. Now let's do a little bit extra. Let's plug in maybe Fraser's wallet, okay? So let's get rid of the search. Let's put in Fraser. So OX5AF8D67B22 uh, bomber. Holy shit, OX0D6769 sent him the exact same amount that Banks was sent. So you know what? Banks didn't do anything with his wallet. But you know what Fraser did with his wallet? He fucking dumped that bitch out into the market and he now owns no portals, dude. The guy is locked. And it's endgame for that. Whereas Banks, and at least he gets this, he gets this vindication because A, he really didn't know what the fuck was going on. And if he was going to participate in a pump and dump, he would have actually dumped the token. All right. This token, he's still holding on to it. He literally told me I'll throw it into a burn. Okay. I'll burn the fucking amount, but it's still sitting on there. So you know what? I have to imagine if he was part of a pump and dump, he's the only one that didn't fucking participate in it. I'll give a five. I'll give a five hundred dollars to one random person in twenty-four hours who likes this tweet. Add milf token. Good luck. Not financial advice. So here it's on the twenty-third of May, right? Okay. So guess what? You want to see who won on the twenty-third of May? Well, let's go to the fucking blockchain. Twenty-third of May, right here. Yeah, who's that? Zero X zero two two five nine four four two eighty eight. Holy fucking shit, dude! They don't care. The daddy won. The fucking manager was the only one that won it. Ninety million. Milk. Holy shit! It doesn't get easier. As a random person, my god, it's like these two guys. Their only random winner is the fucking manager they have. Holy shit! It doesn't get better. Now, something really cool in all of this is Face Clan has actually come out. Banks, and from what I'm talking to, they're open to the idea of having me and Coffee go there and audit them. Banks especially is okay with us checking his phones and uh, tell uh, and like all of his laptops. I mean, he doesn't want us to look into it. He he he's actually completely okay with the idea of getting a third party organization, us, and a group of investigators to look into it. And honestly, I might possibly do it. I'm down to do it with coffee. I'll fly down to L.A. and I'll bring some of my friends from my old day, and we'll look like, we'll look at it as a team. Okay, we will give it the full forensic fuck down but i definitely don't want to bring myself into this i'd rather have actual authorities federal agents looking into this and putting it down for legal record as also to 
put the right people behind prison and also to really give a proper investigation into FaZe Clan to really isolate them from what I believe to be really terrible fucking actors. At the end of the day, Frazier, a lot of these people that have been suspended, with the exception of Tico, in my opinion, who's like the most like clean boy out of all of this, uh, have absolutely tarnished FaZe's name in the brand around the world everywhere okay in the eyes of the public phase looks scummy right now and i mean there's just no way to really go about that these guys really fucked up their image okay but at the end of the day i like to go for the truth and if that means auditing phase as a third video for this when i already have to deal with the interviews of all these individuals who are now coming to talk is going to be another monumental task, bigger than the one you have already watched. But ladies and gentlemen, that's where we're going to go. Now, at the end of the day, I want to understand more. I think the story is a lot deeper than what I've even looked into, but that's pretty much what we're getting down to. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is almost a passion project as much as it is a search for the truth. Uh, if you want to say that any YouTuber criticizing you lied when they looked at the fucking blockchain and looked at each transaction... You're full of fucking shit, okay? That's all I'm going to say on a personal level. It burns me watching that fucking ap apology video uh, that basically said, don't believe the YouTubers. They don't have any... No, no, no. We looked at the facts, okay? And the facts don't fucking lie. Ladies and gentlemen, that being said, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This was an investigation. Part two into Save the Kids. The most deepest scam rabbit hole that I've ever fucking seen. That said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm out.